Hello everybody and welcome to my first video in KSP 1.1 pre-release edition. And I wanted to show you first the new landing gears. You got the small landing gear, the smaller landing gear, the medium landing gear and the very large landing gear. In the back the latter one of course is new. And you see the new UI everybody has been talking about. And if you remember my shuttle shuttle video, then you may also remember that I said I want steering on those bigger landing gears. And yes, I got it. Okay, we also got, well, some kind of accident, but look at those wheels steering happy all the way. And another nice new feature, well, at least not it worked as they should, the wheels now, the landing gears now have lights. Yay. Okay, one of the things I was most looking forward to was the inflatable heat shield. And here you can see me trying to get this thing onto land because I wanted to test if this thing actually floats so I could use it for, let's say, a naval base or something like that. Okay, so opening it once you're underwater does not work as I expected. So yeah, let's try it this way. Opening up those inflatable heat shields. And... Yes, we're now in the water and we're floating. Perfect! My plans for conquering Lathe with a floating base are drawing closer. Okay, so how do these heat shields react to Kerbals? Let's find out, shall we? Yay, okay. So apparently the heat shield eats kerbals. Jebediah, can you get out of there? Come on. Yes, okay. So it eats kerbals, but it spits them back out. Little bit like a friendly pit of sarlacc. Okay, can we get out of there? Yes, look at that new nice ocean down there and... Oh, oh, what was that? Are those... Are those heat shields floating? <laughs> I've discovered a new hovering device! Even better! Now this will be interesting when used with some nice propulsion... So what else can we use this heat shield for? So maybe we could use it like a parachute or like a replacement for a parachute. But yeah, that does not slow us down really any significant way now, does it? Okay, let's see what that impact does for us. And oh well, the crew survived. So that's nice. So let's talk about fairings for a little while. They've been adapted for this version of KSP 1.1. So you have now a clamshell option stock, yay! And you can also set how many segments you want to separate the fairing and also the ejection force. Why anyone would ever use less than maximum ejection force is beyond me, but yeah, there's a nice new setting for that. And also those new clamshell fairing parts are excellent emergency shelters for Kerbals stranded somewhere on a far away planet. Yeah, you get down there, girl or boy. What are you? I think you're a boy. Okay, while we are talking about fairings, there was one really annoying bug that, well, made my life a lot harder. And it was the bug that engines could not be activated while inside a fairing, even though they were decoupled and basically free of the fairing. So let's try this out and... Yes! They fixed it! Perfect! I'm starting to like this version even more from second to second. Very nice. Okay, enough about that shenanigans. So one of the things I was mostly looking forward for was the performance increase. And you can see here on the launching pad a bit of a monster of 
more than 800 and something parts almost 900 I think or even more I don't know but this was unplayable in KSP 105 and here it works fine even better once you ditch the first stage and have about let's say those are now 700 parts 600 parts something like that and you can also see on top Kerbal Engineer also already works for KSP 1.1 so Big round of applause for the modders that already have made their mods available for the newest version of Kerbal Space Program. This is really great. Okay, so we can put more than a thousand tons into space. But let's get back on the ground for a while and let's talk about wheels. So the wheels now have something a bit more resembling realistic performance. Not saying they are realistic. Why, you may ask? Well, I'm going to show you about in a second because I think those wheels are way too powerful. And in about five seconds, you know what I mean. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> So basically, you can now build tanks. Dear Buggy, please get upright. No, not like that, but yeah. There we go, it pays off putting engines on the wheel axis. Okay, so can we repeat that experiment? We can hit the other tank in the back. Trying to build up speed. We're a little bit slower than before, but maybe that's enough. And... BOOM! Yeah! This is not a Land Rover, this is a Land Destroyer! Okay, where else can we go with that thing? Well, those are nice fuel tanks, but... Uh, okay, we jumped over them. Well, that looked cool anyways. But well, let's take a different approach to a similar object right beside the launch pad. There we go, jumping and... BOOM! Yeah, the Destructo Buggy! Okay... So, small targets can be destroyed by this tiny little tank. But what about bigger targets? Hmm... Hey VAB, I'm looking at you! Okay, let's build up speed. Faster, faster... So this is really the ultimate David versus Goliath battle. Three tons versus probably three million tons. And... Yes, something exploded! But it apparently was a part of my buggy. Okay, VAB, you win this time. Okay, at least we can drive around still with no broken wheels. Perfect. But once your wheels do get broken, you kind of run into a bit of a problem. And those are the moments, which are rare by the way, those are the moments where you realize that this is really just a beta version of the coming Coral Space Program 1.1. You can see here I purposefully destroyed one of the wheels, well three of the wheels actually. So let's try and repair it. Repair the wheel in the back, there we go. And let's repair the wheel in the front. Um, does that look repaired to you? Well, it doesn't to me. You can also destroy your wheels by using other forces, like stupidly placed engines right at the front of the vehicle. And once you destroy all four wheels, well in this case, at least, you get a Perpetuum Immobile. So basically you're stuck. Could be the reason that this vehicle weighs more than 5 tons and may be too heavy to repair, but 
it was driving fine before, so I don't know, maybe this is a bug, I'm not sure yet. But all of this shenanigans aside, Kerbal Space Program 1.1 looks to be a really, really great release, and I'm looking forward to the final version. And you can look forward to the continuation of my Martian series coming very soon, but still in KSP 105. So thanks for watching, goodbye.